Hey everyone, welcome back to Grade Game, where every student can make progress. We're going to be looking at another required practical today, but this time I'm branching out. It's going to be some chemistry. No more of the physics ones at the moment, we're looking at chemistry today. This required practical is all about titration or neutralisation. Now, as always, the instructions are downloadable from my web shop. The URL is appearing on screen. Okay, make sure you get a copy of those because that tells you how to do the practical. So, onto the equipment that we need. Most important, ladies and gentlemen, do not forget safety first. Safety specs worn at all times. Okay, so we're going to be making sure that we wear our safety specs. We don't want to be cool, we've got to make sure that we wear them at all times. Equipment that we need we're going to need a wooden stand. And that wooden stand is going to take our burette. Now, a burette is a very accurate measuring device. It has graduations all down here and a tap at the bottom that allows us to control the liquid as it comes out here. The tap, if it is vertical, is open. If it's horizontal, it's closed. Okay, And that's going to go into our stand. We're also going to need a volumetric pipette all right now this is basically a pipette with a set volume it needs a pipette filler and i'll go into how to use that in detail a little bit later we're going to need a white tile a conical flask a funnel some methyl orange indicator and 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide and our sulfuric acid. Now we don't know the concentration of this sulfuric acid because that's what we're going to try and find out in this video. So let's get it all set up. So here we have our pipette and pipette filler. So we can see that this says 25 millilitres on it and there is a mark there showing us where we fill it up to. We take our pipette filler and we place that on the end of the pipette. To operate the pipette filler, you use your thumb to drive the thumb wheel, which pulls the plunger up. And if we put too much in, we operate this lever here to allow the liquid to run out. So with the pipette in the sodium hydroxide, we start to suck up the sodium hydroxide into the bulb and we want to get the level just right so you can see we've gone over there so we release a little bit of air out and we want the meniscus be just touching like so. We can now add the sulfuric acid to the burette. We've got a small funnel in the top of the burette to aid pouring in. Once the sulfuric acid has reached above the zero line, we can put the beaker below the burette. Now we can drain out the excess sulfuric acid, but first you must remember to take the funnel out of the top. So we can see that we're above the zero, so what we want to do is put our hand around the burette to the tap, and we operate the tap so that a little bit of liquid comes out at a time until we are at the zero. We then put five to ten drops of methyl orange indicator into the 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution.
and then you need to swirl the beaker to get the methyl orange to spread throughout the sodium hydroxide. We then open the tap on the burette to allow drops of sulfuric acid to come out very very slowly. Note that I'm reaching around the burette so I don't snap the tap. And then we swirl and we're looking for a colour change we're looking for yellow turning to red You notice where the drips are going it's starting to change color but when we swirl it we lose that color we're looking for a permanent color change There's our orange colour. I repeated the experiment three times and here we can clearly see the three different results of the experiment. Take these down to help with the calculations later. So here we have our three results from the titration. 12.5 centimetres cubed, 12.9 centimetres cubed and 13.0 centimetres cubed. We now need to calculate the mean. In order to do that, we have to add up these three and then divide the answer by three. So on our calculator, 12.5 plus 12.9 plus 13, then you must press equals and then divide by three. Otherwise, you'll get the wrong answer. So here, our mean is 12.8 and we can just do a little sanity check 12.5 is the lowest 13 is the highest so our mean should be somewhere between those two 12.8 is between 12 and a half and 13 that looks like a right mean to work out the concentration of a solution you need to do the number of moles divided by the volume of the solution. Now we want to work out the number of moles of sodium hydroxide, which is this one, so we need to get that on its own. So to do that, we've got to move the volume of solution up to that side of the equation, which gives us concentration multiplied by the volume equals the number of moles. Now concentration is measured in moles per decimeter cubed and the volume of the solution that we had was in centimeters cubed. So there's a conversion that we need to do as well. But let's put in the numbers that we have. So we had a concentration of 0 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed and we had a volume of 25 centimeters cubed. Now to convert between centimeters and decimeters you need to divide by a thousand. So we put that in brackets so we do that bit first. So, using our trusty calculator, we do 25 divided by 1000, and that gives us 0 0.025. And that has to be multiplied by our concentration of 0 0.1. So, multiply by 0 0.1, which gives us an answer 
of 0 0.0025. And there we have the number of moles in our sodium hydroxide. If we look at the equation for sodium hydroxide neutralizing uh, sulfuric acid, we see that we've got 2NaOH plus H2SO4 goes to form Na2SO4 plus two lots of H2O. So this tells us that we need two moles of sodium hydroxide to neutralize one mole of sulfuric acid. So therefore, the number of moles of sulfuric acid is equal to the number of moles of sodium hydroxide divided by 2. Now this number here we had from step 1 we worked out to be 0 0.0025 we divide that by 2 which gives us 0 0.0025 divided by 2 is equal to if we can see that there 0.00125 so we needed 0.00125 moles of sulfuric acid if we look at our little booklet that we've downloaded we can see that we've written those two answers in here so we're now on to step three calculating the concentration of sulfuric acid so to calculate the concentration of sulfuric acid we do the number of moles divided by the volume so it's moles by voles so substituting in the numbers that we've got we had 0 0.00125 moles and the volume of acid that we had comes from our results table we had a mean volume of 12.8 centimeters cubed we need to convert that to decimeters cubed so again divide by a thousand now we need to do that bit first before we divide it into 0 0.00125 so we're back to our trusty calculator 12.8 divided by 1000 gives us an answer of 0 0.0128 so we've got 0 0.0125 over 0 0.0128 so now back to our calculator again that gives us an answer of 0 0.0976625 we don't want all those decimal places so we'll go to 0 0.098 Don't forget our units, that's moles per decimeter cubed. So looking back at our results, we've now filled in that calculation that we've got there. The number of moles is mass divided by the relative molecular mass of the substance relative molecular mass of H2SO4 we've got two lots of hydrogen which has a mass of one one lot of sulfur which has a mass of 32 and four lots of oxygen which has a mass of 16 which gives us 2 plus 32 plus 64 which gives us a relative molecular mass of 98 so we're now in a situation where our concentration in moles per decimeter cubed is equal to concentration in grams per decimeter cubed divided by relative molecular mass so we rearrange that molecular mass is concentration 
in moles per decimeter cubed is equal to our concentration in grams per decimeter cubed. Relative molecular mass was 98. Our concentration in moles per decimeter cubed we worked out as 0 0.098. So we go back to our trusty calculator. 98 multiplied by 0 0.098 gives us an answer of 99.604 grams per decimeter cubed. There we have it then. We've been able to work out the concentration of that sulfuric acid by doing a titration. Remember this is one of your main required practicals. You'll need to know the method and you'll need to be able to work out the concentration of an acid following that process. Now in the exam they may not give you sulfuric acid. It may be a different acid, but the process is still the same. Thank you for watching. Don't forget you've been watching Grade Gain, where every student can make progress. Please subscribe to my channel. Watch some of the other required practicals, chemistry or physics. It's up to you, but they're well worth it. Good luck with your GCSEs.